Did I get you up? No. Eden, uh... Well, Eden sent me over with something for you. What? <laughs> well, how is she doing? She's doing like everybody else. I don't think it's really something yet. Yeah, listen, do you want me to... Take Sammy out for a walk for a little while or something, just... It won't do any good. She's been like that all morning. I've tried everything. I tried walking her and holding her, but she won't be comforted because she knows something's wrong. You sure she's not just hungry? No. <laughs> she's not hungry. I say, I know what the problem is. She's... She's waiting for Mason. You see, morning was all week there time together. Before he left for work, he would get his coffee cup and he'd sit with her. And he'd wait for her to eat her breakfast, and then he would read to her from the New York Times. <laughs> she looked at him like she understood every word he was saying. She doesn't understand anything that's going on. I know, I don't know what to tell her. He's, he's not dead. He can't be. I don't know what I'll do without him. Are you planning to go up to the church today? Uh, no, I wasn't planning on it. I want you to take me up there. I don't think that's a good idea. No, you don't understand. I have to go back up there because I have to find Mason. Julia, Mason died in that fire. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. That's what they want you to think. You see, I know that because Mason told me. They were on to him, so they suspect something, and I'm sure that's what he was doing. He was trying to break through or break out or something, and they just don't want me to find him. If that were true, don't you think he would have called you by now and told you that he was safe? Maybe he can't get to a phone. Maybe he's being watched. Did you think of that? Look. Okay, just listen for a second. The coroner's office made an identification. There was no question as to who it was. Now, that may be difficult to accept. I understand that, but you're going to have to try. He's gone. No! He's not. I don't believe that, and I will not, I will not accept that. If it's any comfort, I know where you're coming from. I have been there. If Mason were dead, I would know it. In my heart, I would feel it. I would know it. Now, he is not dead. He is out there somewhere, and he needs our help. Now, if you don't want to help me find him, then that's fine. I will do it myself. But any way we look at it, I am going to find him. Okay, wait a sec. I, I'll be happy to go back to, up to that church. I'm ready to do that. I was going to go in a few days anyway. I, I think that that's fine, but I don't think you should go. I think you should stay here and I'll have Eden come and keep you company, if that's okay. I know you think that I'm crazy, but I'm not. He is alive, and I know that he is alive, and I know that the answer is somewhere in the convent there, okay? I don't think you're crazy. If there's anything to be found, I'll find it. You have my word. So finally, after, after weeks of this kind of thing, this guy following Mason, I came up with a plan to trap him, but it backfired. And somebody knocked me unconscious, put me on a boat one way out to sea. 
All of which uh, was ostensibly for the purposes of maintaining the illusion that Mason was the one who had killed Mark. Pretty incredible story. You read my mind, Padre. Yeah, well, be that as it may, while I was out of the picture, Mason uncovered a series of clues which led him to believe that whoever was trying to frame him like this was using this church as a home base. All right, that's where I draw the line. I can personally vouch for each and every member of our order that none of them were involved in any of this, and the very suggestion is absurd. To what purpose? Well, that's what Mason was trying to find out, and apparently he was getting close. He told his fiancée that uh, he was just about to go to the police with his evidence. He had a fairly, fairly clear picture of who was responsible. Did he tell her who he suspected? No. He didn't want to get her involved. The next day, he was dead. Now, I personally find that beyond coincidence. I think that whoever was trying to frame him was afraid the whistle was going to be blown and killed him. Oh! Bravo, bravo, curtain down, applause, applause, applause. You know something? You gotta quit your day job and go into writing for television. You know, they're hiring. Mr. Timmons, you don't agree with this theory? I, well, uh, except for a few minor instances, I mean, very minor. I, I think that Mason set this whole thing up just to throw us off the scent. Well, I'm inclined to agree with you, at least as far as this parish's involvement is concerned. Sister, come in. I believe you've already met these two gentlemen. I just told them that we will be happy to cooperate with them in any way in their investigation. Of course, Father. Oh, then you wouldn't mind if I asked you a couple of questions about uh, Mason? <laughs> of course. Great. What was your first impression of him? He was just another one of the homeless, a little, a little down on his luck. And did he ever do or say anything that made you suspect he was not what he claimed to be? No. No, I mean, he was a very unusual man. I'm sure you knew that. But he just spent most of his time making the repairs on the church. Um, I do remember, though, he spent a lot of time asking questions, particularly about a nun that was here with us for a while. Sister Mary. Yes. Yes, he was extremely interested in her life with us. Mm -hmm. And did he make any friends while he was here? No. No, no. Uh, like I said, he spent most of the time by himself. Mm. Perhaps another of the sisters could expand on that a bit. Fine, fine. Uh, if, you, if you think it's necessary, absolutely. Sister, make sure that Mr. Castillo gets to talk to absolutely everyone. And if there's anything else that I can do to assist you, please let me know. There is nothing that we have to hide. Thank you, Father. Ciao. Sure. Nothing here, nothing here. No, I guess Mason must have just been imagining things. You know, I hate to I hate to break it to you, but I didn't imagine getting cold cocked. And I don't think Mason imagined being followed and threatened. Babe, we just have his word for it. Keith, what about all the evidence that magically appeared on your desk? I mean, where the hell did that come from? I don't suppose you found it. I resent that. I resent that. It couldn't have been just a, a concerned citizen seeing that justice was done, could it? Oh, it was a concerned citizen, all right. Somebody wanted to make sure justice was not done, which is why they, they no doubt went to such great lengths to get me out of the picture and then divert attention from themselves. Whoever did this tried to pin it on Mason. It's simple. Then why kill the man? I mean, he was being brought up on charges already. Wait for the guy to go to jail, for goodness sakes. You know what I mean? Wait for him to go to jail, then the guy who's really responsible would be scot-free. Except that Mason got too close. So somebody panicked. It's, it's obvious. Yo, the bottom line is this. My men agree with the findings of the fire department. There was a boiler explosion. A big fire resulted. No sign of arson. Mason was trapped. Satisfied? Satisfied? Uh, uh, uh... No. Well... Gee, I am. And I'm bone tired, so... I tell you what, I'm closing this investigation. Verdict? Death by misadventure. You can't do that. <laughs> but I can. And if I were you... I'd stop chasing phantoms. Go home. I mean, there's see somebody there that needs you. You can't help Mason here. Keith, whoever killed Mark McCormick is still at large. I guess I'll find him.
Simmons has officially closed the case. Neither Father Michael nor any of the nuns we spoke to had any knowledge of who Mason was or what he was doing there. Then they were lying. All right, Mason told me that they were on to him. That's why they were being so cautious. Julia, there's a possibility Mason was getting a bit paranoid under the pressure. He had the DA breathing down his neck. There was an APB issued by the police. He was probably getting desperate to prove himself, huh? Well, of course he was. Of course he was, because nobody would believe him, right? Who spoke to everybody at the church? Why would they withhold the truth there? Because they were hiding something, or they were trying to protect someone. Did you talk to Sister Sarah? I'm not sure. Which one is she? She was... I saw her when I was there, when she was helping Mason. She's deaf and she uses sign language. I did not meet her. Well, then you have to go up there right now, and you have to find her, because she might be the only person that can help Look, us. Look, I am not going to give up on this, but we're going to stop now and regroup. Before we go anywhere else, before we figure where, where else we're going to go. Then. No, Cruz, we don't have time for that right now, all right? You've got to go right now because she's the only person that can help us find Mason. Julia, this is awful. It's awful for all of us and it's probably worse for you, but don't build your hopes up about something that's impossible. Are you just going to give up on him? Again? Give up on him! He is not dead. All right? He is not dead. He is out there somewhere and he needs our help. But if you would prefer to give him your sympathy and your self-righteous funeral service, then go ahead. You do that. You just do that. All right? And if you're not willing to help me, then fine. Then I will just do it myself. So you have your funeral, and you go do whatever you have to do. But you just leave me out of here. Please, right? please listen to me. You're not making sense. You need to be rational about this. No, please. I can do that from them. But not you, Cruz. You're as bad as they are. I want you to get out of my house right now. I don't want to leave you alone. Get out of my house. Get out. Get out. We don't need any of you. I don't need you. I don't need anybody. I don't need anybody. Get out. Get out. Get out. <laughs> I sure do hope you found the peace you were always looking for.